I am your host, Christopher, and this is the first episode of my Woolcast. What I wanted to do this episode was just talk to you about, you know, how I got into this, and then also talk about future Woolcasts. So how I got into this was probably around 13 years ago I started knitting, but really the seed was planted many years before that. I used to hear the clicking of my grandmother's needles as I watched the hockey games on Saturday night, and, you know, it definitely left definitely um, had an impact on me. I used to be amazed at the stuff that she was able to, to knit. And back then, boys were not encouraged to knit. So, you know, put that on the shelf. It wasn't until I became an adult, I saw other guys knitting, and I just thought, you know what, if they can do it, I can do it too. And so it was a hobby for a while. And then as I got deeper and deeper into it, it definitely became a passion. And the passion for me is a couple of things. One is the people. Yarn people are a specific breed of people. Um, they're amazing, they're wonderful, um, they're kooky, and, and I love them. And I've made so many amazing friends um, through knitting, and so I just wanted to share this with that group. Also, I've really been getting into a, having a, developing a better understanding of where my wool is coming from. You know, the world is much bigger than Merino. Merino is nice and soft and squishy, but there are so many different breeds of sheep out there. And so what we're going to do is take a closer look at some of those breeds, especially the heritage breeds. I honestly believe that there is something that we can do with uh, every type of fleece out there, and it isn't just making carpets. So we will be looking at the shepherds, uh, or talking to the shepherds and shepherdesses, and also talking to the farmers as well, and getting a close look at, at the sheep. One of my other passions is definitely natural dyeing. And so we will be going into the forest and I will be foraging for uh, all kinds of things to put into my dye bath. I live on 17 acres in a log cabin that was built in the 1850s and it is halfway between Toronto and Montreal. And there's all kinds of things in my forest uh, to get. You know, it's a half deciduous, half coniferous forest. So it really makes for an interesting, um, it produces interesting ingredients for my dye bath. And I've got some awesome pots I want to share with you as well. I recently bought a copper pot, it was a double boiler, it's about this big, and it was built in the 1820s. And I've been doing some dyeing in that as well. I think last week I did coffee and birch bark, and I was very happy with the results. So we'll be looking at what's in my dye bath. And then the other area that I definitely am going to be pursuing is the influence that fiber has had in some of our art galleries. We'll be talking to some of the artists as well as some of the gallery owners. I'm very interested in knowing you know, where this um, interest is coming from and what is influencing the, the use of wool in art. So if any of that appeals to you, please subscribe below. Or you can reach out to me on Instagram under Cabin Boy Knits, um, on Facebook Cabin Boy Knits, and my YouTube uh, channel will be Cabin Boy Knits as well, or my homepage, CabinBoyKnits.com. Take care. Bye bye. Pencil.